It is my pleasure at this time to introduce one of our climate action champions uh, for all the incredible work that he's, he's done in this space. Tom Steyer is the founder and president of Next Gen America. He's a business leader and philanthropist, and he believes we have a moral responsibility to give back and help ensure that every family shares the benefits of economic opportunity, education, and a healthy climate. In 2010, Tom and his wife, Kat Taylor, pledged to contribute most of their wealth to charitable causes during their lifetimes. That same year, he worked to defeat Proposition 23, an attempt by the oil industry to roll back California's historic plan to reduce pollution and address climate change. In 2012, he led a campaign to invest hundreds of millions of dollars in California schools annual annually by closing a corporate tax loophole. To date, Proposition 39 has put nearly a billion dollars into California schools and clean energy projects, saving millions of dollars in annual energy costs. He now serves as president of Next Gen Climate, an organization he founded in 2013 to prevent climate disaster and promote, promote prosperity for all Americans. He has been on the front lines demanding that candidates take the climate issue seriously and advocating for candidates and organizations that do. It is my privilege to introduce you, Tom Steyer. So good morning, and it's great to be here. It is always terrible to follow Governor Brown, <laughs> who is one of the all-time great public speakers, in my opinion. Um, I do want to also express my appreciation for this award. I know that in this room are many people who have worked on this for decades and who have a great deal invested in it and a great deal of respect and admiration do them. So I accept this with an awful lot of humility and that humility is well deserved. Um, over the 15 years since this conference first convened, a lot has changed in California. In 2002, for those of you who are old enough to remember it, 2002 was the epicenter of the so-called tech wreck. That was where the first generation of web-enabled companies got slammed in the stock market. Today, those social media companies that people thought were going out of business have grown beyond anyone's wildest imagination. And since 2002, the United States has also seen a meteoric rise in clean energy. It's gone from an idea to a reality. Over the past decade and a half, we've boosted the amount of electricity we get from solar by 67 times, wind by 33 times, and coal-fired generation has dropped by over a third. We've easily met our clean car standards, and we can start to see the advent of a real EV market and an accelerating one. Investments in renewables of every kind plus storage are transforming the way we generate and use energy. And of course, as the governor said, we have a long way to go, but the market has steadily and clearly moved in our direction to the point where any objective investor knows that it now makes smart business and economic sense to bet on cleaner sources of power. Many things have changed in the last 15 years, but one thing doesn't change, and that's a reliance on science and fact. No matter what the administration's fossil fuel apologists say, no amount of lies can alter the clear evidence that our planet is warming and it is caused by greenhouse gas emissions. If you got a chance to listen to Scott Pruitt limp incoherently through an interview with Fox News, you'll know why these guys should not be let out in public. It was impossible for him to answer basic questions because he had absolutely no evidence to support his talking points. And that is the level of dishonesty we're up against. It, there's a degree of absurdity that we're encountering, encountering in the halls of Washington, D.C. government. And it's at a time when we can obviously least afford it. So, with all the frustration at some of the elected officials in DC, we have to turn for so a source of inspiration and integrity to the work of men and women committed to science and truth 
far beyond the beltway. That is the state and local leaders who are leading the way toward a safer and more prosperous future. And I must say, there's no one, I'm a little bit prejudiced about this because I live in California, but there's no one more important in that movement than Jerry Brown. To quote Justice Brandeis from 1932, a single courageous state may, if its citizens choose, serve as a laboratory and try novel social and economic experiments. This is obviously not a time for mere economic experiments. When an inactive, inattentive, or irresponsible federal government refuses to lead, states have to bear the burden not simply to test out smart policies, but to become the prime movers. We are obviously at such a moment today. One night last November, America went from a country leading the planet in addressing the threat of climate change to a government flooded with leaders with close ties to the fossil fuel industry. Donald Trump's election certainly shocked me, but his resulting policies shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. Undermine the most important international agreement of our times, the Paris Climate Agreement. Defund and degrade the EPA. Double down on expensive and destructive fossil fuels. It's literally the playbook promoted by oil companies and their allies. And his approach and his budget are characterized by a direct attack on truth, on research, and on growth. The budget proposed by the administration specifically cuts programs that spur innovation. His foreign policy has abandoned our leadership position on climate and clean energy, leaving a vacuum for China, for Germany, and for others to fill. If you look at his administration, it is living proof of the concept that personnel is policy. A Secretary of State who moved to DC directly from the C-suite at Exxon, an interior secretary who wants to hand over federal land, land that belongs to the citizens of the United States, to coal companies at a bargain price, and also to resume drilling off Santa Barbara, an EPA head who has repeatedly sued the very agency he leads. That's who we're fighting in DC. And honestly, given the climate statistics, we can't wait for the next election. So our policy progress is gonna to have to come at the state and local level with citizens and with elected officials demanding cheaper and cleaner energy. And by the way, I, it's not that we've given up on Washington DC. Ultimately, the work we do at the subnational level will lay the groundwork for federal government leadership down the road, just as Justice Brandeis predicted. But right now we have to remember that everything we can't do in DC, there are steps that we, as states, cities, businesses, and concerned citizens can take to put this nation on a path to a better future. We can't stop an anti-science EPA from dragging its feet on curbing carbon pollution or undermining the clean power plant, or slowing the transition to a cleaner electric grid nationwide. But we can accelerate the efforts at the state level to take the three basic steps that we need. Clean up electricity generation, electrify everything, and dramatically increase energy efficiency. We can offer incentives state by state to meet energy demand with clean sources, to store renewables, and to power our vehicles with clean electricity. We can ensure the ben that the benefits of a greener future reach those who need it most. Good jobs for middle class workers, cleaner air for our kids, particularly our poor kids, lower energy bills for working families. We can do those things and we will do those things. We're in a position where every state can improve its environment and its economy at the same time. That's something we've known and we've been saying that at least since 2010, at least I have personally. Good jobs, improved health, and clean energy go together. And by the way, Scott Pruitt has now stolen that line. Despite the fact that his policies are a, de a direct attack on all three of those ideas. At this moment, we can't stop the Trump administration from trying to weaken federal clean car standards. 
but in the States, we can make a smart bet on the future of American transportation. With pollution from the electric sector falling and emissions from transportation rising, California and 15 other states and Canada can resist any challenge to our better fuel economy standards. We can write new market rules to leverage the power of electric vehicles to help balance our grid and make the necessary investments in charging infrastructure. And we can do this because unlike the officials in DC, we can see clearly where the market is headed. Cleaner, greener, cheaper, more electric. And our research shows that also means millions of net new jobs. You may think the stock market is a crazy roulette wheel, but we all noticed Tesla is more valuable at this point than Ford or GM. And unless the people in Detroit wake up, the EV industry and the market writ, writ large is going to leave them in the dust. At this moment, we can't stop President Trump from breaking promises to the international community or refusing to uphold our pledges for, under the Paris Accord. But we can send a message to the world that the US is more than one man or one administration. States can and will keep faith with our commitments. We can extend the reach of the under two MOU. As Governor Brown said, representing more than a billion people and over one third of the global economy. And we can look forward to keeping the momentum on track by expanding the number of cities and states and other partners in the coalition so that there is a clear message. Americans will continue to lead on this challenge regardless of what the federal government might do. We can't necessarily halt Trump's assault on science and his attempts to undermine America's climate and clean energy leadership. But as voters and as citizens, we can let him know how short-sighted and unpopular his actions are. There's gonna be a big science march on Saturday for just that purpose. There's a march in DC the following Saturday around climate. We can create policy frameworks at the state level to drive American innovation and let our businesses do what they do best. Innovate, design, disrupt, and create the future. We can push initiatives like Prop 39 in California, which closed an unfair tax loophole and used the money to help schools boost their energy efficiency specifically. As Craig said, that, that has let us invest hundreds of millions of dollars in our schools. It's created over 10,000 good paying jobs and it's saved taxpayers tens of millions of dollars. That's what we can achieve together. If we're willing to stand up to the fossil fuel industry, if we remember that America can always lead as long as we push our country block by block, city by city, state by state to do what's right and what's smart this is a political problem. The fossil fuel industry and its cronies don't play by the rules and they have unlimited money. That is daunting, even if we do have truth on our side. But we also have a market moving towards electric cars and we have American business, including iconic, huge, mainstream American businesses like GE, and Caterpillar and Cargill and Mars, not to mention all of the new businesses like Google, Facebook, and Costco, all of them shifting to clean technology, all of them committed to the new technologies. And we have states moving on this that are not just blue states like California. In Ohio, a Republican state, the governor vetoed a rollback on renewable energy. In Illinois, they're upping wind and solar generation under a Republican governor. In Michigan, they're boosting spending for efficiency programs under a Republican governor. Texas, Wyoming, and even Oklahoma are getting in on the act, building dramatic amounts of wind power. And most of all, we have the millions of men and women willing to, willing to take to the streets to speak up for science, for cleaner air and water for the generations yet to come. This is the coalition that we have and I don't think we should be betting against it. But the other side is going to be busy too. They have plenty of lobbyists 
and they are going to be extremely determined to protect their profits. We have a moral calling to leave our children with a better America, a cleaner, healthier, more prosperous America. Everyone wants that. I'm obsessed with climate statistics, and the climate statistics, for those of you who follow them like baseball statistics, are daunting. So as tough as these times are politically, we have no choice as to whether we act. States, cities, and our allies in the private sector, all of us have to play our parts in accelerating the move to clean energy. We, but we can't just be the workshops and laboratories and policymakers. It is really important that all the people in this room also be the voices, the voices that refute each and every lie, no matter how boring it may be to do it and how unnecessary and unpleasant you think it is to do. We have to be the voices that advocate for a growing clean energy market, and we have to be a deafening chorus in favor of solar, wind, biofuels, discovery, science, evidence, and the truth. We have to make it clear that we will never turn back on this. So I think our mission is very clear, and we see ourselves as trying to be full-time in this movement, to oppose Trump every day and push progressive policy and the state and local levels at every turn, to take our case to the courts when necessary so that when this administration ignores the law, as it is definitely going to do, we can stand firm for the rule of law. We need to create the broadest coalition possible, one that embraces all of our shared values. Let me say one thing about California. Environmentalist voters, people who care about climate and vote on it, people who care about clean energy, start with Latinos, second of all, African Americans, third of all, Asian Americans. Caucasians are the least committed. So when we think about our coalition, please remember that it, is, it has to be extremely broad and include everybody in our society, in every ethnicity and race, and that we have to be addressing specifically a broad need of progressive policies together. Our mission statement at NextGen is to act politically to prevent climate disaster, promote prosperity, and protect the fundamental rights for every American we will stand for an economy that works for working families. We will stand for urgent action to create jobs and combat the disastrous effects of climate change. And we will stand up for a healthy, thriving democracy where the dignity of the people is respected and the will of the majority is the last word. In 2016, with our partners, we registered over 800,000 Californians. We organized on 370 college campuses and we knocked on over 12 million doors across America. In 2017, we are going to continue to stand up for what we think of as basic American values and basic American rights, and we will stand up for the better future that it is our destiny to create. I really thank you for being here. I know how committed you guys are. I know how important you are. I also know there's an enormous amount of work to do and at this point, honestly, I don't believe there's any margin for error. So I wish good luck to all of us. Thank you.